Gail Hammonds of the Press Enterprise. Thanks, Brad. Given that the mayor does not have a vote on council decisions, but can veto a council decision, what would be your criteria for using the mayoral veto? And what decision would you have vetoed, if any? And we're going to start with Mr. Gardner. I think the mayor needs to be very careful in using the veto power because, as you said, they have no real authority. The only way the mayor can be effective is by being a leader and a collaborator and building consensus amongst the council members to move the city forward. Um, there are times that Ron Loveridge, who actually never vetoed anything, successfully threatened to use a veto. Uh, one example was when there was a proposal to defund the Community Police Reserve Commission. Yeah. Community Police Commission. Um, and he threatened to veto that if it was done, and that ended up not happening. He didn't have to, to use the veto. I would use the veto if an action were immoral, illegal, or in my judgment, substantially against the best interests of the city, but only sparingly. Uh, Mr. Gardner, but what council decision, if any, would you have vetoed? I know you're on the council, but that's part of the question. We haven't had any, while well, I've been on the council, that I would have vetoed. Had the council voted to defund the, the CPRC, I would have vetoed that. Okay, Mr. Melendrez. Thank you so much. Again, I think the mayor is very influential and obviously communication is a vital and part, vital part of their job to be able to work with all the council members. Being, uh, d doing a veto, again, we need to be very careful because that can really create issues within the council itself. The only way that I think I would, I mean, the only way that I would use a veto is that if I felt strongly that whatever item was going to be passed would be unfair to a community, unfair to our citizenry, and one that would create a negative environment amongst our community. It's so important that we keep our community looking forward and our community working together, as difficult as that sometimes is. But to veto a bill, it really needs to be one that I believe will be destructive to our community. But what council decision, if any, would you have vetoed? Mr. Melendrez. That is an excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> and that there is, is an excellent out. question. I, I'm a collaborator. I, I would say that if we were to take away monies. No, no, the question is, in the what, past. In the past. You what, know, I, and, and you could say none. I mean, it says I, if you any. You know, I, I can't think of anyone that came to us that, that I would veto. Okay. Thank that's, you. That's fine. <laughs> Ms. Petrozella. The, the veto power of the mayor should be used very, very sparingly. Uh, the mayor's role is to create cohesion, to create a group so that you can put policy forth that is the, in the best interest of our city. I believe there's one particular item as mayor I would veto. I don't believe there is a public benefit to this item. I also don't believe that we are spending money that we don't have for this item. And this item would be the uh, best best in Krieger move to the Citrus Towers building because we have a 911 dispatch center that needs to be relocated. Very, very important essential city service. And we are willing to spend eight to ten million dollars on that, but we're not willing to spend 1.5 million dollars for safety. Okay, Mr. Atkinson. I knew you were going to get to me. Yes, I am. <laughs> Uh, I, I think the, uh, it's hypothetical. Uh, I think if the circumstance pre presented itself, uh, you would have to take a to look at things. But I think the veto power is something that need to be would need to be used uh, very sparingly and not without uh, full debate by the public on on the issue, so that you have all the facts and can make an informed decision. Uh, and you would certainly have to be very very passionate about it. But you were on council for two years. Mm -hmm. 
uh, for two terms over eight years. Uh, you took a break for over the last four. So over these last 12 years, for example, was there any decision that if you had been mayor, you would have vetoed? Not hypothetically, a specific decision made. Well, as I told you before, one of the qualities that I think a mayor has is bringing people together. And I think there's been some decisions made that I could bring them together and probably wouldn't have to use the veto power. Okay, Mr. Bailey. I do agree that uh, the persuasive power of the mayor is the most important uh, part of his um, ability to, to, to move policy in the right direction. And so you got to be very careful about using that, that bully pulpit, which is the veto. Um, you don't want to create power struggles on the council. And so working that out in, in before you know, something happens, I, I, the, the specific answer to that for, for me recently was in a, in a park, uh, Tekeskeet Park, where we didn't come um, to, to fruition and connecting to the next generation with, with a skate park. And it was disappointing to me, but it was an opportunity lost. We had a nice big piece of property. Downtown has a lot of, of youth uh, skating, uh, bicycling, BMX riders, and, uh, and scooters, wood streets, you know, thousands of individuals. You know, the, the median age is less than 30 there. And I think that that would have connected with that community in downtown, taken them off of the mall and the courthouse steps. And so that's one issue that I, I think I um, would have put, put more effort into. Okay, thank you, sir. Mr. Benavides. <clears throat> Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm going to take a different approach to this question than my colleagues up here. We've heard that, well, veto will be disruptive. Well, I I'm not sure how they can say that because it hasn't happened in several years here in this city. You know, sometimes, folks, a leader must stick his neck out like a turtle. And then, as a result of his or her action, then accept the consequences. So what instance would I use a veto power if I truly felt, ladies and gentlemen, that the action of counsel threatened our true creed of diversity and inclusion? Yes, I would, do, I would veto that, and I would stand by it, and suffer any consequences therein. But are there any specific actions that the city council has taken in recent memory that you would have vetoed if you were mayor? Not offhand, sir. Okay, Ms. Chavez. I'm not scared, though, of that question. Um, and maybe some people will disagree with me. But instead of vetoing, I would use a tabling of the uh, item because if I don't feel that the, the public has been fully informed of the effects it's going to have on them, then I would tell them to table it or I would use my veto power because it will hurt the people of Riverside. Any specific decision? Redevelopment. Because I not, not to this day, people do not understand redevelopment, how much cost it was going to be, where, you know, who was going to decide those, those uh, uh, what, what items were going to be done, what, what projects were going to be done first. We didn't get to vote on that. They just went by wards and decided we're going to do this, we're going to do that. But yet the public really didn't understand the full effects of redevelopment. They didn't understand that it was, you know, maybe they were told 30 years, but to tax your future generations 30 years, I would never have done that. Okay, thank you, ma'am. 